Madam Speaker, the House is not in order. The House will be in order. Madam Speaker, I rise in the remembrance of Congressman Mike Fitzpatrick, who passed away three weeks ago after a 12-year battle with cancer. Mike was a public servant in the best sense of the word, a tireless champion who loved his community and always worked to improve the lives of his neighbors. His long list of accomplishments from the conservation of public land as a county commissioner to the creation of the National Cemetery at Washington Crossing where he now rests, are achievements that any representative would be proud to have. But one cannot accurately capture Mike's legacy without talking about the kindness that motivated his 20 years of public service. Years ago, a park, a county park officer called Mike about a homeless man who was living in the park and needed a place to stay. The shelters in town were full, and the park officer didn't know what to do. But Mike Fitzpatrick did. He let the homeless man stay on his couch for the night until he found him shelter the next day. Not everybody here knows that story, but those who know Mike, it comes as no surprise. Mike never stopped trying to help his neighbors, even after retiring from Congress and while battling a very terrible disease. He was focused on what the late columnist Charles Krautheimer called the things that matter, such as one's family and community. For Mike, Politics wasn't a career, but public service was a never-ending commitment, a passion to do good that was rooted in values like patriotism and faith and was shaped by his upbringing in Leventown. Certainly, Mike will be remembered for his willingness to cross party lines. That's fitting. He believed the measure of a person went beyond their partisan label. His bipartisan spirit has united this body many times before, and it's uniting us once again today even in one of the most divided times in recent memory. He did not apologize for being a Republican or a conservative. But in truth, those were not the titles that mattered most to him. It was father, it was a Catholic, it was a brother. He was faithful and he was honest. He lived with integrity and honor. He turned the toughest moments in his personal life and career into examples of courage, grit, and grace. And most importantly, he never shied away from asking in the words of the old prayer, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. In this body, we remember people and their legacies by portraits. And I'm sure there'll be public memorials for him. But legacies of change last so much longer. In fact, it grows from generation to generation. Like compounding interest in our snowball rolling downhill. Mike's legacy here in Congress and back home in Bucks County, there'll be more than tribute to one man. It'll be an internal reminder of the values he stood for, the hard work, the faith in God, and never giving up. I want you to join me in expressing our deepest condolences to his family. His wife, Kathy, is here. His mother and father, Miriam and Jim. And we all know his brother, Brian, living in his legacy. May God bring this comfort and strength in this difficult time. I asked you to stand too soon, I apologize, because I'm going to yield to our majority leader to speak of Mike as well. I yield to the gentleman from Maryland. <laughs> <coughs> Madam Speaker, Kathy, members of the Fitzpatrick family, members... Uh, on both sides of the aisle from Pennsylvania who know they've lost a, a dear colleague with whom they served. Uh, he served with honor. He served with civility. He served as an example. Madam Speaker, at a time when rank partisanship has become sadly pervasive in Washington, Mike Fitzpatrick shone a bright light of consensus building civility and respect. He was an example that all of us could follow. I was sad to learn of his pathing. My thoughts, of course, as 
and I know I speak for all of us, not in a partisan sense, not in a Democratic or Republican sense, but in a human sense, are with his wife Kathleen, their six children, and his entire family, which includes our colleague, of course, Brian, his brother, who succeeded him representing Pennsylvania's 8th District. Madam Speaker, it speaks volumes that Mike had so many friends here on this side of the aisle in addition to his own side. I will tell you that the words that the uh, Republican leader spoke could be spoken by all of us.